today on an all-new Dr. Phil. The shocking headlines. Kenneth White killed by a massive rock thrown off the overpass. These kids had allegedly thrown tires, a shopping cart. How did you feel when your son was being charged with second-degree murder? The parent of a teen charged speaks out. However he got caught up in this is just not him. Do you think he had any idea that someone was going to wind up killed? What do you say to Kenneth White's family, to his children? The exclusive interview. Did you read the statement your son had written? It was incriminating. What did it say? That turns personal. It happened in my family. That's my wife's sister's windshield. The questions you want answered. Somebody practically decapitates this man for no reason whatsoever. Why shouldn't people be outraged? It made national headlines when five Michigan teenagers were allegedly caught dinging, which is a dangerous game involving throwing objects off an overpass and trying to hit cars on the highway below. According to authorities, that game turned deadly on October 18th, 2017, when the teens allegedly hurled a large rock that crashed through the windshield of a van, killing an innocent man, 32-year-old father of four, Kenneth White, as he made his way home from work. Police arrested the five teens, and they were charged as adults with second-degree murder. If convicted, they could each face life in prison. Take a look. We were all young and stupid at least once. But a night of pranks in Michigan has landed five teenage boys in jail. Five high school students in Michigan are accused of throwing rocks off an overpass and killing a man. 32-year-old Kenneth White died last week near Flint, Michigan, when a six-pound rock crashed through the windshield of a car he was riding in. A friend apparently was driving him home from work. It seemed they thought it was fun to throw projectiles off an overpass into oncoming traffic below at least 20 times. One by one, each of the five teens accused in the killing of Kenneth White made their way into a packed courtroom. Kyle Anger, McCaden Payne, Alexander Miller, Trevor Gray, and Mark Sikelski heard the criminal charges against them, all five facing second degree murder counts. They believe a rock thrown by Kyle Anger killed White. Kenneth White was engaged to be married, and he's the father of four children. He took away a child's father <laughs> and the love of my life. The group of teens will all be tried as adults. They're charged with second-degree murder, along with a host of other allegations that could put them behind bars for life. Even if they spend 30 years in prison, they get to wake up every single morning. They still get phone calls from their parents. They still get visitors. My son don't get none of that no more. That was taken away from him for something stupid. Today, in an exclusive interview, a parent of one of the accused teens speaks out for the first time. Michael Payne, McCaden Payne's father, joined us and shared never before heard details about the case. How did you find out that this had happened on the freeway? I found out the next day, actually from a, a coworker, and I was like, man, that's terrible. And then I received a phone call uh, before my shift ended that day, probably around a uh, two o'clock time frame from the school principal that had called me and said that McCaden was being questioned by a couple of detectives that I need to get up there. My first thought was he was in maybe another incident that occurred with another individual. You know, that's the only thing that I could think of. So you didn't connect the two events when they called you? Not at all. So did you leave your shift? and I, go to school? I left my shift and went to the school. When was the first moment that you found out they were questioning McCaden about what happened on the overpass? Yeah, when I got into the room, then they introduced themselves as their detectives' names and, and what the incident was about. What did they say to you? They told me that McCaden had just wrote a statement on paper they told me that he was part of the five boys that were supposed to be the ones involved in the rock throwing at that point did you know that someone had died yes i did was that on the news that night or did you hear it from your friend at work apparently it was on the news that afternoon because a friend of mine at work had told me that he had heard about it on the radio and then it kind of hit home just as a dad 
take me through that moment when a detective has just told you that your son has just written a statement about being involved in an incident where a man was killed. What went through your mind at that point? Total devastation. I didn't know exactly how to register that right off the bat. It was powerful. It was hurtful. I felt really bad for the whole situation. It's, it's difficult and hard to explain. Well, try for me. I mean, this is your son. To know that just a couple hours prior to this, I had heard this from a coworker, and to now sitting right next to my son, that is the accused of the situation. I don't have words to explain that. Did you read what he had written? I did read it. And what did it say? Very little. I'm not sure if I should talk about that. But when you read the statement, it was incriminating. It was incriminating. Now, he's 16, and they questioned him without you being there? And I had raised that question, and they told me that it is lawful, and they could do that because he was 16 years old, uh -huh. that he could give a statement without a parent being uh, present. Now, there are reports that one of the boys turned themselves in. I is that true? I heard that, but I'm not positive. I've also heard that there was a tip on social media that somebody picked up. Had you heard that? I did. Did you read what was on social media? I did not read the tip. And did they tell you what he was being charged with? They kind of left that open at the time. They said that they had enough uh, evidence that they were going to take them down for the incident that happened on the Dodge Road Bridge. Did he leave school that day in handcuffs? Yes, he left school that, that day in the handcuffs. Along with two other boys? Two other boys. So he's charged with what now, to your understanding? They're charged with second degree murder and uh, some other charges. I think there's a total of 10 charges altogether. How did you feel when you understood that your son was being charged as an adult with second degree murder? I never thought in a million years that I would ever face anything like that, and especially coming from one of my own, you know, the whole, an incident involving somebody dying is devastating. They've been referred to as the Cleo Five. How do you feel about him being grouped in as the Cleo Five? I don't like that at all. What's your objection to it? You know, the comments that are being made judgment before anything even comes out about this. They're already deemed bad kids, and it's not true. They were involved in something that took a person's life, but to discredit them out there the way that, that people are right now, I think is just, it's just not right. Let's look at this from a, a cold objective standpoint. Your son is just one of the kids on this bridge, and they are kids. In my opinion, these are kids. They're not adults, they're kids. Your son, <laughs> is a bright young man. Is he not smart enough to think through if you drop a six pound, eight pound, 20 pound rock off of a bridge where it drops 15 feet and hits a car going 70 miles an hour that it can hit a windshield and have devastating results? I mean, is he smart enough to know that? I would say yes, sir, yes. Why he involved himself in however that is, I don't know. Would you expect him to say, what the hell are you guys doing? We... That's what I would have expected him to say. He's always been taught to walk away, stay away from people that may be doing something that looks like it's even gonna remotely go bad. That's why this is so shocking to know that his involvement in any way is not him, it's not his character. Well, if the sheriff is correct, these kids had thrown tires, rocks, a chair, a shopping cart off of overpasses. This wasn't a one-time deal, so this wasn't like one lapse in judgment. Are you aware of those allegations? I am aware of those, and from, from what I know, McCaden wasn't involved in those. They had a word for it, they called it dinging apparently, according to the sheriff. Had you ever heard that word? Not up until that point. You'd never heard it talked about or 
never heard your son say the word. No, never. So your theory is that the only time your son did this was the time he got caught. Correct. Allegedly, these teens collected large rocks and put them in a flatbed truck. Whose truck was it? It was um, Kyle Langer's truck. And Kyle is the older boy, the 18-year-old? Yes. And they got the rocks from somebody's house, somebody's land? That's what the, the report says. I don't know any of the logistics of exactly what happened. It's alleged that they came from one person's property and they loaded them onto this truck. And it just seems like if the allegations are true, there was a lot of forethought to this. It wasn't like an impulse that there was lots of time for somebody to say, no, this doesn't make sense. We're not gonna do this. You know, we always say hindsight's 2020. Is he shocked that he didn't say, whoa? He's very regretful, very regretful that he did not, you know. Stop this. Stop an altercation. Well, this has been a huge national story, as you know, with some people saying things like, throw the book at him, fry him, put him under the jail, give him life. What do you say to those people? Coming up. Where does he go when he goes out at night? He doesn't go out at night. Well, he went out this night. Not there is nothing hotter than real, honest to goodness, love. Mama wanna tell you where it's at, I wanna get that. I was made for this. Get with it or get lost. You drop the ball big time. I'm throwing y'all my very own Miami yacht pod. It just shook up all of the dynamics. Y'all ready for this? Road Home Sales Event on now. Receive a credit of up to $3,250 on select models now through January 3rd. Wanda card from Credit One Bank bestows points for all my journey's expenses, like rental cars, hotels, flights, feasts. Get up to 10 times the points on hotels and rental cars when you book through the Credit One Bank Travel Partner. Visit CreditOneBankTravel.com. Theo's nose was cause for alarm, so Dad brought Puffs Plus Lotion to save it from harm. Puffs has 50% more lotion and brings soothing relief. Don't get burned by winter nose. A nose in need deserves Puffs indeed. America's number one lotion tissue. No matter what part of my story you come in at, I'm always chasing the music. Nobody was trying to find a fat black girl that rapped and sang and played the flute. If I'm on that stage, we're connecting to something higher. The show must go on. Dr. Phil's exclusive interview continues. These five teens from Michigan are accused of throwing six pound rocks off an overpass. Now they are in shackles and their families are in a state of shock. The prank called dinging killed 32 year old Kenneth White, his fiance, Amy Cagle. He took away a child's father. <laughs> and the love of my life. The five suspects in the Michigan case in which the father of four died have all been charged with second degree murder. They are in jail without bail. They have all pled not guilty. Well, this has been a huge national story, as you know, with some people saying things like fry them and put them under the jail, give them life. 
What do you say to those people? It's hard to accept the words that you hear and, and the way that people think about these boys and they're just being judged before it's over. My boy is not this type of a boy that would participate in anything like this. He did in some way, but this isn't the true him. And however he got caught up in allegedly participating, I don't know. And you use the word allegedly. Let me just preface all this by saying these are all allegations here. We don't know what happened. You say he got caught up in this. What was his relationship with these other boys? Did, did, were they around the house? Did you know them? I knew two of them that he had grown up with uh, that had been friends up through probably the better part of the sixth grade. And then they kind of fell away from each other due to sports and other things and, and different likes. And then they've somewhere along the lines come back and reunited and started to hang around together again a little bit. Which two did he know that, that he hung out with? Mark and Alex. What did they like to do when they hung out? Were these kids jocks or video gamers or what? Mark what and Alex say? were jocks. And my boy, he just basically is the outside type of a character. He's not really much into the sports. What did he like to do? Hunts, fish, the typical kid thing, you know, camping and being out in the woods, riding his quads and dirt bikes. When he was around these other four boys, where was he age-wise with the other four? Two are 15 and two are 16, and the other boy had just turned 18. And McCaden is how old? He just turned 16 in September. The 18-year-old is which one? That's Kyle. Okay, and did you know him at all? I don't know him at all. Did it surprise you that a boy two, three years older was hanging around with these younger kids? It did, and a person that I was unaware of that my boy had any kind of dealings with. Mm -hmm. H had McCaden been in trouble before at school or with the law? No trouble with the law, no trouble at school outside of a few incidences, um, you know, helping somebody out that was being bullied. Helping him out in what way? Deterring a situation from occurring. So he stepped in if somebody's being picked on? Correct. W would you consider him a, a tough kid? Would you say he stepped in to stop somebody being bullying? Could he take care of himself? He can take care of himself. Yeah. So he's not likely to be picked on? He's not violent, but he's disciplined to the point of he can take care of himself when it, if ever need be. Would you? Describe him as a follower, a leader, people pleaser. Where, where would you put him in terms of personality? He does like to please people. He is not a follower, and he does like to lead and go his direction. Kids these days will experiment with drugs or alcohol. How about him? Is he? No, it's out of the question. He's never ever smelled like alcohol or never come home smelling like any kind of pot or, or anything, so. Where does he go when he goes out at night? He doesn't go out at night. Yeah. Well, he went out this night. Well, this night here happened to be he was not on my premises at that time when that happened. And I don't really know what transpired from start to finish. Where was he? You say he wasn't with you that According day. According to him, him and three or four of these boys were supposed to be going to clean some geese that a couple of them have shot in one of the person's grandfather's cornfield. Okay. And to my knowledge, that's what took place. And then after the fact, I don't really know what happened after that. And did he come home that night? He went to his mother's house that night. Did he say anything to her about anything having happened? She wasn't home at the time. His sister was there. She told me that he had went straight to bed and that he was tired. Do you think he had any idea that someone was gonna wind up killed? Coming up. You don't think there should be a murder charge here? I'm not gonna say that I don't think there should be a murder charge. I just don't think that it needs to be life in prison for them all. Should any of them get life in prison? Real, honest-to-goodness love. Mama wanna tell you where it's at. I wanna get that. I was made for this. Y'all ready for this? Oh, 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 oh. It's a new leader in town.
down. Why are you the one just threatening me? Bang your f baby dad. Right That's what I say. Come for me, go low. If you want to, I'm going to hell. Okay? Ugh, this rental car is so boring to drive. Let's be honest. The rent-a-car industry is the definition of boring, and the reason can be found in the name itself. Rent a car? You don't want a friend. You want the friend. You don't want a job. You want the job. The is always over a. That's why we don't offer a car. We offer the car. Sixth, rent the car. Edible delivers, even on the same day. Just order one by. Millions of women have regrown their hair with Viviscal. Our hair growth supplement is 100% drug free and proven effective in 10 clinical studies. Viviscal, reclaim the hair that makes you fully you. Okay, honey, we really gotta go. Daddy printed out my permission slip, right? Steven? Do you suffer from cartridge conniptions? Be conniption free thanks to the cartridge free Epson EcoTag printer. A ridiculous amount of ink, up to two years of ink comes in the box. The EcoTag is the perfect cure for the Epson EcoTag. Just fill and chill. Available at there's something new from Better Than Bullion. Introducing the Culinary Collection. Exciting new flavors like sofrito for casseroles or adobo for fajitas, each adding a little something special to all your family favorites. But don't take our word for it. The Culinary Collection from Better Than Bullion. Wednesday nights. With somebody out there targeting the cheerleaders. You never know what's happening next door. As far as I know, it was my neighbor. Murder in the Heartland, all new Wednesday at 9, followed by an old murder under the Friday Night Lights on ID. Dr. Phil's exclusive interview continues. What do you say about these, these teens calling this old oh, prank, throwing rocks at the children? It's not a prank, it's second degree murder. I don't think anybody's laughing, and I think if there's any admonition, any warning that both David and I can give, it's telling young people that you make a bad decision, you could be spending the rest of your life in prison. This is not a prank. Do you think he had any idea that someone was going to wind up killed? No, not at all. He would have never participated in anything that would have been a known fact of taking someone's life. What is a just punishment for something like this? There has to be some accountability. What that is, I'm not sure. Rehabilitation of some type. I don't think that these boys all need to go to prison for the remainder of their life. Is there a difference between whichever boy allegedly dropped the rock and a boy that was just standing there? It would, I guess, depend on, you know, what it comes down to as far as what took place. This man that lost his life, his name is Kenneth White, as you know, a father of four children. How do you feel about Kenneth White, his children? I feel for the family. I feel for their loss, leaving four kids without a father. It's hurtful on both sides. You know, I've got, you know, my side of, of this incident. I have a loved one that's involved in it. I feel compassion for the family. Is McCaden scared? Very. This has taught him a valuable lesson and you know, he's going through a lot of a lot of emotions. He's learning a different way of living. What's his life like day to day being incarcerated? He's very depressed. He tries to keep strong. I write him daily to keep him built up and lifted up and encouraged. You don't think there should be a murder charge here? I'm not gonna say that I don't think there should be a murder charge. They all have consequences of some type. I just don't think that it needs to be life in prison for them all. Should any of them get life in prison? I think the very person that took Kenneth White's life, maybe not life, but some accountability for that.
What should happen to your son? It depends on the severity of his involvement. And what that is today, I, I don't know. But if he knew what was going on, he helped load the rocks onto the truck, he drove up there knowing what was gonna be done, he did nothing to stop it. He was leaning over, watching or whatever, and didn't drop the rock, but was involved to the point of going along with it, not stopping it. You would say that's more culpable. Coming up. This set of circumstances has hit really close to me. It happened in my family. Dr. Phil's sister-in-law's horrific accident. Overpass, erratic acid, windshield looked exactly like the windshield in your situation. She had burns over 70% of her body because some idiot threw something off the overpass. Closed captioning provided by... Hey, did you hear? There are new COVID-19 booster shots designed for recent Omicron variants. Pfizer, the more you want to do, the more we want to do. Schedule yours at vaccines.gov. Airwick. Airwick scented oils are infused with natural essential oils to create authentic seasonal scents that fill your home with holiday spirit all season long. Connect to nature this season. Life is what you make of it. Make it beautiful. La Vie est Belle, the iconic Eau de Parfum, Lancôme. At Macy's, the fragrance destination. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Liberty Mutual. They customize your car insurance so you only pay for what you need. And by switching, you could even save $652. Thank you, Liberty Mutual. Now, contestants ready? Go! Oh, Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 liberty. The refrigerator is Greg's happy place. My kids eat, but I finally figured it out. <laughs> we can get all that we need, and then a little bit more, at Walmart. Uh oh Now this is going to be... Even on the same day, just order one by. The holidays were awkward for Romeo and Juliet. Thankfully, Amazon had just the gift to bring the families together. Shop legendary deals. Next on Love and Marriage Huntsville. I think I saw an interview, and uh, they asked Mel how she doing with Martel's new boo thing. Oh. She felt probably happier when he was leveling down. Mm -hmm. But the level up is kind of a gut punch. Hey, Martel. Hey, what up? And hey, don't keep me outside all this damn Yeah, heat. it's outside today. You gonna invite me to that house? Don't play with me like that. Love and Marriage Huntsville. New episode, Saturday at 8, 7 Central. There is nothing hotter than real, honest to goodness, love. Mama wanna tell you where it's I was made for this. Get with it or get lost. You dropped the ball big time. I'm throwing y'all my very own Miami Yacht Park. It just shook up all of the dynamics. Y'all ready for this? Damn, he's gorgeous. My girlfriend has a girl for me. Have you been seeing other people? No matter what happens, somebody's gonna end up being heartbroken. 90 Day Fiance, Love in Paradise, Monday at 8 on TLC. Dr. Phil's exclusive interview continues. If he knew what was going on, he helped load the rocks onto the truck. He drove up there knowing what was gonna be done. He did nothing to stop it. He was leaning over, watching or whatever and didn't drop the rock, but was 
involved to the point of going along with it, not stopping it, you would say that's more culpable? I would say that's more culpable. You say people are judging these kids without really knowing them, judging your son without knowing him. What do you want them to know about him? McCaden is very respectful, very helpful, very organized. He tends to help others out before he does the things that he wants to do. And he's a well-rounded, good individual. A lot of theories for incarceration. Protecting society from predators, monsters, rehabilitation, uh, setting examples for others of consequences if they do bad things. A lot of different theories. Do you think your son needs prison to deter him from ever doing something like this again? Most definitely not. You think he's learned that lesson? I know he's learned that lesson. I don't know if you know it, but there's this fact pattern, this set of circumstances has hit really close to me, which is why I followed this story so closely. I'll let you take a look at this tape and you'll understand what I mean. Dr. Phil McGraw has helped thousands of viewers through their most difficult personal tragedies. Well now, a random attack has the doctor facing one of his own. An unidentified attacker had doused his sister-in-law with acid. She is in the Oklahoma City Burn Center with burns over 70% of her body. On June the 5th, 2001, I was headed to the airport with my good friend, Jim. The windshield exploded. It sounded like a bomb. Oklahoma lawmen continue their search for the person who threw a jar of acid onto a passing car. Someone high above on this overpass dropped a burning liquid like a bomb. The acid burned my face, my lips, my cheeks, my chin, my chest, my arms. I inhaled acid, and it burned the inside of my throat. She was screaming. She was telling me she was dying. I remember having my hands in my face and thinking I was bleeding and then realizing that was my skin in my hand. Doctors say had she not been wearing eyeglasses, she may have been left blind. The whole time I was at the hospital, Jim, my daughters, Robin, my other sisters were all at my side. My first reaction when I saw mom in the hospital was just pure shock. She heard me gasp. My mom is very much a fighter. I didn't see how my mom was going to come home alive. Phil was a tremendous help. He has worked hard to find the person that committed this crime. I'm offering a substantial cash reward for any information leading to the arrest and conviction of these people. From the moment of the attack, I've decided that it was up to me and I was going to live. I've had 15 surgeries. I helped pass a law in my home state. There you go. Cindy Broaddus Act is a law that makes throwing anything from a bridge or an overpass a felony. I'm at peace with the fact that I look like a burn victim. I made a choice not to be bitter. It happened in my family. Sorry for that. Overpass, muriatic acid, windshield looked exactly like the windshield in your situation. Kenneth was killed. Cindy almost died. She had full death burns over 70% of her body because some idiot threw something off the overpass. There's a difference between the two. We never found out for sure who did this crime to Cindy. We pretty much feel like we know who did it. By the time we narrowed it down, both of them were dead. They had both been killed, but they were both adults. They were approaching 30 years of age. The difference to me is when you're a kid, your brain isn't through growing yet. You know, your brain grows until you're 25. And when you're 16, 17, the last part of the brain to really grow and develop is the neocortex. It's that part of the brain that you reason with. It's part of the brain that you have the ability to predict the consequences of your actions. Kids that age just don't have the ability to really project and reason 
out ahead, which is why I think 16-year-old kids should typically be tried as kids, not adults. I've studied everything I can about your son, and I, I could see not one thing in his background that would make me believe that he's murderous, homicidal. Is he capable of having stupid moments, stupid thoughts? That I would say he's certainly guilty of, but you'd have a hard time convincing me that he stepped on that bridge with the intention of killing someone. Should he have been there? No. Should he be held accountable for whatever his role was? Absolutely. An innocent man lost his life. A woman lost the father of her children, and four innocent children will grow up without their father. If those boys were on that bridge, they certainly knew the difference between right and wrong. Coming up. How do you think he would react when he found out that someone had been hurt and in fact lost their life. I know it crushed him. Does he get the gravity that someone is dead? Closed captioning provided by... There is nothing hotter than real, honest-to-goodness love. Mama wanna tell you where it's at, I wanna get that. I was made for this. Get with it or get lost. You dropped the ball big time. I'm throwing y'all my very own Miami Yacht Park. It just shook up all of the dynamics. Y'all ready for this? Oh. Oral treatment for COVID-19, could it be right for you? If you have a high risk factor, like being over 65, heart disease, diabetes, asthma, or smoking, and you test positive, don't wait. Ask your provider about oral treatment right away. Dude, you coming? Alka-Seltzer Plus Power Max gels with more concentrated power because the only thing dripping should be your style. Plop, plop is fizz with Alka-Seltzer Plus. Also try for fast sinus and pain relief. Dancing is everything. Soccer is the best. But her moderate to severe eczema could make it hard for her. My skin was so itchy and my outfit was uncomfortable. Now, my skin's not as itchy. Now, we're staying ahead of her eczema. There's a power inside all of us to live our passion. And Dupixent works on the inside to help heal your skin from within. It helps block a key source of inflammation inside the body that can cause eczema. So they can have clearer skin and less itch. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. Healing from within is a wonderful thing. Ask your child's eczema specialist how Dupixin can help heal their skin from within. on Love and Marriage Huntsville. I think I saw an interview, and uh, they asked Mel how she doing with Martell's new boo thing. Oh! She felt probably happier when he was leveling down. Mm -hmm. But the level up is kind of a gut punch. Hey, Martell? Hey, what up? And hey, don't keep me outside all this damn Yeah, heat. it's outside today. You gonna invite me to that house? Don't play with me like that. Love and Marriage Huntsville, new episode, Saturday at 8, 7 Central. Dr. Phil's exclusive interview continues. David Layton is Genesee County's elected prosecuting attorney. My heart hurt when I had to make this decision. When you read the reports, they sound like adults, but when you see them, they're clearly children. Even though he doesn't believe they intended to kill, he argues they knew the potential consequences of their actions. This is not a prank. This is not the actions of a kid. And this is second-degree murder. 
You know, the prosecutor, Layton, said, and I quote, my heart hurt when I had to make the decision because they're kids. I don't think that these kids should not be held accountable, nor do you, correct? I don't. And I think there has to be some wisdom involved in this, is what I'm saying. Well, I'd like to talk to Jamie, the woman that McCaden thinks of as a stepmother, as well as your attorney, Michael Manley, so if we can add them to the conversation. Well, thank you two for joining us. You've been listening to everything that, yes. that we've talked about. Jamie, let me start with you. You know McCaden very well. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised to hear that he had any involvement in this at all? My heart sank. It's not typical of his behavior. I'm devastated. Why doesn't this fit with his personality and his makeup? He's always the type of person that goes above and beyond to help anybody. I mean, I work for the school district. Um, when I volunteer for any school function, he's always right there with me. He's helping out our elderly neighbors with anything that they need. Why did he go along with this? If he was there on that overpass, why would he not say something? I don't think he was thinking. He, I don't, that's not his typical behavior. So to me, he wasn't thinking at the time. Right. Now, you're a teacher. Do you know any of these kids? Um, I know Alex and I know Mark from McCaden growing up, but I don't know the other ones now. Tell me about those kids. Are, are they the kids you would expect him to be friends with? Yes. But they, like Michael said earlier, um, they haven't really spoken and hung out since they were probably fifth or sixth grade. But when they were younger, they were always outside. They were building lemonade stands. They were building forts in the backyard. That was the type of things that they did together. So when he started hanging out with them again, I thought maybe they're just getting back to their old ways of being, the way that they were before. So describe McCaden. He loves to be outdoors. He is very creative very innovative, very helpful. Mm -hmm. He, I mean, he does, what teenage boy helps with laundry? Seriously, without being asked, or does dishes without being asked. That is the type of child that he is. So is this, he an affectionate? Very, he loves, he loves giving hugs and, and getting hugs. How do you think he would react when he found out that someone had been hurt and in fact lost their life? I know it crushed him. Right now, I know he's struggling with that big time. Does he get the gravity that someone is dead? Yes, he does. It really affects him. You being a father, you know the power and importance of a father in the home. What do you say to Kenneth White's family? What do you say to his children? Coming up. Here's a man riding along and somebody for their own entertainment steps up there and practically decapitates this man for no reason whatsoever. Why shouldn't people be outraged at that? Today, you can give a gift like no other. A gift that can help St. Jude Children's Research Hospital save lives. I think it's the most worthwhile place to put your money when it comes to childhood cancer. If it weren't for St. Jude, I wouldn't be sitting here today. If it weren't for St. Jude, a lot of kids wouldn't be with their families every day. Let's come together to help the children of St. Jude fight childhood cancer. Visit this website, call this number, or scan the QR code with your $19 monthly donation. Join with your debit or credit card right now, and we'll send you this St. Jude t-shirt you can proudly wear to show your support. Today, you can help St. Jude save lives. It takes a heart for somebody to say, I have this extra that I'm willing to give to St. Jude so that they can help save more lives. Make your monthly donation today to help cure childhood cancer everywhere. Cleaning is the worst. Seriously, there's got to be a better way. So we gave Swiffer a shot. If we don't love it, we get our money back. Spoiler alert, love it. Sweeper's heavy-duty dry cloths grab dust and hair and lock it away. Better than my broom that can push it around. It even gets into hard-to-clean grooves and grout lines. Cool. And Swiffer Duster gets in all those hard-to-reach places, trapping three times more dust. <laughs> yeah, switching a Swiffer, totally worth it. Love it or your money back.
Dude, you coming? Because the only thing dripping should be your style. Plop, plop is fizz with Elka Seltzer Plus cold and flu relief. Also try for fizzy fast cough relief. And we're down. We go, 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 Aqua de Joe, Eau de Toilette, and the new Eau de Parfum, Giorgio Armani. At Macy's, the fragrance destination. It's the new leader in town. Why are you the one just threatening me? Bam, your oh, baby dad. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Come for me, go low. If you want to, I'm going to hell. Okay? Dr. Phil's exclusive interview continues. Amy Cagle still can't believe 32-year-old Ken White, her fiance and father of their child, won't walk back into her life. He didn't deserve to die like that. That's what I want is justice. And for him to just be taken away so fast and so brutally, I feel like, it's just wrong. He was the love of my life. You being a father, what do you say to Kenneth White's family? What do you say to his children? I'd like to ask if they could please accept our apologies, and we hope that they can someday be able to forgive the incident. And I know they're looking for justice, and that, I think, will play out in the time to come. What do you want them to know about McCaden? I would like them to know that, that this is not a murderer. He is not a problem child. This is not this character that would set out to go to try to destroy somebody's life. And he understands the severity of what happened. If they're thinking he's some kind of monster, are they wrong? They're definitely wrong, but I can understand their reasoning. Michael, you represent McCaden, and at this point, you're working with the prosecutor. He said, it breaks my heart to charge them as adults. So why charge them as adults? Well, I think uh, Mr. Layton had no choice at this point uh, due to the fact that if he didn't, he couldn't later do it without going through a lengthy judicial process. So uh, I'm very confident in him, and I think when he sorts out the facts that uh, resolutions will be worked out. But he's also very victim-driven, and uh, the White family is very angry, and they have every right to be. I saw your face as it related to your sister-in-law. So now it's where the adults have to take over and try to set aside that anger and emotion and come to some fair resolution. But why set it aside? Because here's a man riding along, a good man, a productive man, a, a contributing member of society. He's got four children and somebody for their own entertainment steps up there and practically decapitates this man for no reason whatsoever. Why shouldn't people be outraged at that? Why, why shouldn't they say, this is absurd and we need to make an example out of these kids? I'm appalled by what happened, but when we make decisions about our future, we have to decide what type of society are we when we sentence kids and juveniles that commit adult types of crimes. I've been uh, very impressed with uh, what you have said regarding the psychological aspects. And, and I want to tell you, the reason we are here today is your credibility, your expertise, and this platform to tell the public that we have to decide as a society who we are and we have to come together without political slogans about being tough on crime, building more prisons, and locking kids up and throwing away the key. That's not the answer. Here's what we have to avoid, though. We have to avoid Mrs. White's four children growing up and getting old enough to say, what happened to daddy? And she have to say, nothing, nothing really. That's the balance that has to be stricken, right? I mean, she's got to feel as though 
justice was served here. There has to be accountability, but not destruction. So what's the latest in the investigation? Closed captioning provided by... There is nothing hotter than real, honest-to-goodness love. Mama want to tell you where it's at. I want to get that. I was made for this. Get with it or get lost. You dropped the bar big time. I'm throwing y'all my very own Miami Yacht Park. It just shook up all of the dynamics. Y'all ready for this? The long-lasting scent of gain flings made it smell like Dave was in his happy place. The massage chair at the mall. But he wasn't. Gain flings with OxyBoost and Febreze. Bye-bye, tough odors. Try gain odor defense. Peaceful state. Full plate. Wait, are you my blind date? Dancing crew, trip for two. Now the final interview. Buy or lease. Masterpiece. Inside joke. Artichoke. Game with Doug. Brand new mug. Give me a kid. Give me a hug. Have you gotten your updated COVID-19 booster? They're designed to help protect against recent Omicron variants. Schedule yours at vaccines.gov. Ugh, this rental car is so boring to drive. Let's be honest. The rent-a-car industry is the definition of boring. And the reason can be found in the name itself. Rent a car? You don't want a friend. You want the friend. You don't want a job. You want the job. The is always over up. That's why we don't offer a car. We offer the car. Sixth, rent the car. There's something new from Better Than Bullion. Introducing the Culinary Collection, chef-created flavor combinations like smoky chipotle and Italian herb that add a little something special to your family favorites. But don't take our word for it. Mwah. The Culinary Collection from Better Than Bullion. A fragrance this alluring could only belong to a powerful trash bag. With superior strength. The Cherry Blossom Fragrance. It's all fabulous. It's all glad. Next on Love and Marriage Huntsville. I think I saw an interview and uh, they asked Mel how she doing with Martel's new boo thing. Oh! She felt probably happier when he was leveling down. Mm -hmm. But the level up is kind of a gut punch. Hey, Martel? Hey, what up? And don't keep me outside all this damn Yeah, beach. it's outside today. You gonna invite me to that house? Don't play with me like that. Love and Marriage Huntsville. New episode, Saturday at 8, 7 Central. So what's the latest in the investigation? The FBI has all the cell phones and the computers. When all the facts are brought out, negotiations can start. And uh, I have seen the White family, and they're devastated. And they deserve justice. You have said your son should have accountability for whatever his level of culpability is. I think we all agree with that. White family, you're certainly in my prayers, and I hope my viewers will put you in there. So thank you all for being here and talking about this today. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I want to thank Michael for sharing his story. He says he cannot express enough sorrow about the way he feels for Kenneth White's family, and he wants to thank the community that has supported him through this difficult time. Now, we'll continue to follow this story and keep you posted on the outcome. The most important thing to remember here is that an innocent man has lost his life. Kenneth White was a hardworking man whose children are now left without a father. His fiance says Kenneth was a good-hearted man who would want her to forgive the perpetrators. But justice must be served here and those accused must take accountability. Let's take some time to remember Kenneth White. We pray for healing for the family he left behind.
Thanks for watching. He was very thoughtful. and He'd make you laugh if you were sad. I wish he was here right now so he could make me laugh. He was the love of my life. We had a special kind of something. And that he was the best father. <laughs> and I wanted to spend the rest of my life with him. But now I don't have that chance. <laughs> on an all-new Dr. Phil. Real estate bias. A seller will say, tell me about the buyers. I said, oh, they're a great couple. And they said, well, what's their nationality? Exposed. Recorded documents that are put on almost every property saying if you're not of Caucasian race, you cannot purchase that property. It's disgusting. Yeah. Beyond disgusting. This cannot be tolerated because it's very true. We're going to go down. We're going to go down with a fight. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today is going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. Get ready to take care of you. Yesterday, we talked about a topic that seemed to come out of nowhere to some Americans, yet very familiar to others. I'm talking about real estate bias, when homeowners suffer from discriminatory practices and bias in housing and mortgage lending fields. Now, examples of this include racial steering, lending discrimination, and appraisal discrimination. And yes, that is still going on in America. My co-executive producer, Astra Austin, brought this to my attention, uh, and I'm really glad she did. She explained to me that her parents were steered to a particular neighborhood when they bought their home on Long Island from a white realtor in 1975 during the middle of white flight, the phenomena of white people moving out of neighborhoods when black people move in. Now, years later, she estimates that her parents' impeccable, well-cared-for home is valued at least a quarter of a million dollars less than the same home in a majority white neighborhood. Now, she and many residents believe this gap is mainly based on the skin color of the neighborhood residents and not the quality of the homes. Now, Astra insisted that various forms of real estate bias are still happening nationwide, and we just had to talk about it. So yesterday, I met with people who claim they were victims of real estate bias, including Keisha, who made news headlines after she revealed on TikTok the strange and at times disturbing behaviors she witnessed after she inherited her grandfather Daniel's home in a multi-million dollar neighborhood in Seattle. America has a major racial wealth gap. The typical black family has only a fraction of the wealth of the typical white family. And many experts say that the root of that problem is real estate. One of the drivers of that wealth gap is redlining. Redlining was outlawed in 1968, but its impact remains. About two years ago, my life was turned upside down when I inherited my grandfather's multi-million dollar home. I started receiving letters from people attempting to buy his house. One stated that I was behind in my taxes, which I was not. One neighbor offered me $800,000. I know my house is worth almost $2 million. I decided to remodel the house. I have an 820 credit score. I was denied for loans repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. What do you think was the most racially motivated attempt to exploit you? The letters were very clear, like, we don't want you here. To get an appraisal, <laughs> one of the requests is, we need you to not show that this is a black home. How many times did you try to get loans to renovate that home? Oh, my god. I would say probably 12. Denied, 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 denied. I barely had any debt. 
I should have been a perfect candidate for perfect her. Perfect candidate? Yeah. I mean, you, you got a great credit score. You have no mortgage. You did your renovations. Oh, yeah. And how did you do them? Thank God my grandpa encouraged me to get a house at 21, so I sold my home to renovate. Therein lies the problem. Yes. You sold mm -hmm. an asset that to... you had that had appreciated. Yeah. That's something that is absolutely shameful. James and myself have been licensed real estate brokers for more than a decade. On August 20th, we went to purchase three condominium units. This particular agent said, quote unquote, I'm not going to sell to you because my gut feeling tells me that we wouldn't get along with you people. Um, I think probably I have my gut instinct told me probably we're not, we won't be able to get along with each other. We knew that we were being discriminated towards. What were the questions she was asking? Are you from this area? Like completely irrelevant questions. When you're silent about your pain, people will kill you and say you enjoyed it. Yeah. And so what are we supposed to do, just be silent? Josie Lynn declined to appear, but her lawyer did give a statement. My law firm represents Josie Lynn, while the Ramaris have chosen to literally market their version of their interaction with Ms. Lynn to every media outlet, I urge caution in giving any credence to the Ramari's fictional account. When people move with breakneck speed to get in front of a camera, as the Ramari's have, to accuse another person of racial discrimination, media should approach such claims with extreme carefulness. In Ms. Lynn's case, when the unvarnished truth is told, it will be crystal clear that she did not discriminate against the Ramaris based on their race or ethnicity. Ms. Lin is a person of color herself. She is a Chinese immigrant who came to America to work hard. She is cognizant of and devoted to treating all people with respect and dignity, irrespective of race or ethnicity. Tanisha Tate Austin and her husband Paul say a white woman who appraised their home set its value at less than $1 million. So they ran an experiment. For a second appraisal with the help of a friend named Jan. And the thing to know about Jan is... She's white. They cleared away their own photos. After what they call their whitewash, the new appraisal came in. Nearly $1.5 million. Close to half a million dollars more than the appraisal roughly a month before. <laughs> So I really need that. I won't take that anymore unless I do have a pre-qualification mortgage. So I need to oh, that means I can't pre-qualify for a mortgage. Oh, so that means I can't go out to see anything. I'm just going to take some notes and introduce you to There is clearly discrimination in real estate. It's especially prominent on Long Island. Where is um, the driver, Chris? A lot of it in, on Long Island is zoning, the banks, the inability to get mortgages. Those are powerful forces. <laughs> real estate agents aren't the most powerful forces. In this country, a lot of generational wealth is built on real estate. And when people are discriminated against, then that's going to perpetuate across generations, and it can't be allowed to continue. I want to add someone to the conversation, and this is Anthony Margulis, a real estate broker and owner of Amalfi Estates in Los Angeles. Uh, he claims he and his agents have witnessed some clients discriminating against prospective buyers based on skin color or sexual orientation, and they informed these clients that they're violating fair housing law. So, Anthony, thank you so much for being here and talking about this. You get pressure from the sellers. We do. You know, there's there's several areas that, that we see it happening. Um, a seller will say, tell me about the buyers. Uh, the first time it happened, I, I've had my company 30 years now. We've helped thousands of families throughout Los Angeles. Well, you, and, your company's well known in LA for yeah, sure. We, yeah, we do quite a bit uh, in Los Angeles. And one of the first times a seller asked for probing information about the buyer, I said, oh, they're a great couple and, you know, down payment's good and um, they're well qualified. And they said, well, what's their nationality? And I was so shocked hearing that from someone. You think they're a normal person. They, you know, you think you're talking to someone that has similar beliefs as you. And to see blatant racism, it's, it's just, it's shocking. And so you explain to them 1968 fair housing laws. You explain to them that's illegal. You, 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 you know, we can't work with you, one. 
That's not, that's not how our company operates. Added to some of this as well, um, appraisal issues that a couple of your guests have talked about. 97% of all appraisers are white, 97%. So then you wonder why there's an issue with appraisals. So I think we have to change it from within. And I think you know, education is a really strong part of it. Um, I think that'll, that'll help quite a bit. Um, I know there's been restrictive covenants. I don't know if you'll be talking about that next, but that's restrictive covenants in Los Angeles, California, and throughout the country are basically recorded documents that are put on almost every 